Cam, welcome back. Uh, nice to see you. Cam, uh, Aurora has been executing on all fronts. We've been executing like mad. And I have to say that a lot of the naysayers out there who were skeptical about your ability to bring all of these diverse assets into one cohesive, mm -hmm. functioning, globalized monster are being proven incrementally wrong day by day. Our business strategy, turns out, was good from the beginning, and we've got the horses to actually make it work. So we've got some amazing people, uh, like Neil Balot, who is our head of global business development. Uh, and so he's been taking the lead, flying all over the world, um, seizing the opportunities that we needed uh, partners and uh, companies to acquire to position us as first or early movers in market after market after market. Uh, we've got Andre Jerome, our head of integration. And as, uh, as I've made very, very clear on multiple occasions, integration is a core capability at Aurora. And Andre and his team have been doing a fantastic job. He's closed uh, and finished the uh, integration of MedRelief before that. Uh, he did the same thing with Canamed, uh, with Anandia. We're, uh, we're finishing that up as well. And doing it very carefully with Anandia, by the way. That's not a, a, a typical operation, right? That's, mm. that's a science operation. Sure. And so we're using a very, very light touch uh, mm -hmm. with that part of the operation. Well, so I'll have it's, to get it's Jonathan in here because he's been on our Jonathan show. Jonathan Page, times. yes, yes. Um, really smart guy, but yeah. a really nice guy as yeah. well. And he's our new, newly appointed chief science officer. Right. So it's really, I mean, from the, my perspective, it's a team of rock stars, and I'm very, very proud of it. Cool. Wow. Yeah. Um, you recently announced that you had made an acquisition in Mexico. In Mexico. And mm -hmm. um, so there's, you know, there's been a great deal of criticism about the markup in assets being rolled into publicly traded cannabis companies. And so I can assure you that um, nobody on our side had any prior ownership Good. of uh, that company. So okay. before you even go there, um, right. That, that's what's what what is the what is the uh, what is the cost of the Mexican acquisition was not disclosed in the No, it, it's not disclosed and for a couple of reasons. One, uh, we haven't completed our DD. Uh, okay. So we're going to complete our due diligence on that and there'll be subsequent announcements. Um, and once we get to the definitive, obviously that all that information will be out there and it's got to go to the board as well. Right. Um, so we've got um, uh, a few more steps in that process. In addition, um, it's also for uh, competitive reasons. Uh, we don't necessarily want to give away uh, what we're paying for certain assets, certainly until it's done, and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and especially when we're still in the hunt right. in other parts of the world for uh, additional uh, assets that complement our story and our strategy. Well, fantastic. Yeah. Um, what other countries are you looking at that really excite you? The UK is one that everybody's looking at for obvious sure. reasons. It's a big population, around 65 million. Uh, and it's so exciting because, uh, you know, as I've said before, at the beginning of 2018, nobody saw uh, the UK as a likely medical cannabis market. And, and then because of the, the stories of, of a couple of very sick little boys with epilepsy that actually made it real uh, to the population of the UK, made it real. It wasn't just uh, conceptual um, consideration of, of a medical cannabis market and you know, all the stigma that traditionally attaches uh, to cannabis. They actually thought about real people with real health conditions who could benefit uh, from medical cannabis and it changed things so quickly. Mm. Um, so that's one. Uh, I think France uh, is going to be a mover. There's uh, momentum building in France. Um, you know, that's another large population, but equivalent uh, to the UK. Uh, and then, of course, there, there are a number that we're already in. Uh, Poland, uh, where we started uh, to operate and sell product, and that's a population slightly larger than Canada's. And we recently announced Luxembourg and Czech Republic and now Mexico. Mm. So the, the, the totality of our global operations is expanding at an incredible rate. I think we're in 23 countries right now, if I have that count correct. Wow, fantastic. Mm. Um, so the European situation is interesting to me because you know, the Eurozone, in some respects, acts as a single market. Yes. And that's the whole point of the Eurozone. Mm -hmm. What do you think the chances are that the Eurozone actually rolls out a Eurozone-wide cannabis policy for both recreational and medical use? Well, it's starting. Uh, um, right now, uh, there's a, a process underway to harmonize uh, treatment of medical cannabis, but it's not a directive process. So it's the first step, and I can't recall the, the word that they use, um, but, but it's uh, the first step to you know, persuade uh, countries to act in concert and not disturb the common market. 
um, I think we will get there. Uh, it makes all kinds of sense. Um, you know, we know already that to enter that market, we have to, on our side, have European Union good manufacturing practices, mm -hmm. EU GMP certification on our production facilities. We actually have, I believe there are six companies in Canada that have um, EU GMP certification, and we've got two of them through uh, Aurora and Mandrelief. And we also have EU GMP certification on our formerly named uh, Padanios, now Aurora Deutschland uh, distributor. So we've got it all the way across the value chain, and that's pretty cool. And it means that we can enter each of these markets as they cascade open. Yeah, we'll have to send uh, Fraser out there with the camera crew and create a documentary on the European operations. I would uh, love to host that. Yeah, and we can do bet. a little European tour. <laughs> sure, sure. And okay. you're going to love our guys in Germany. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I, could, I can imagine. I've never met should, a German I, should, I didn't like. I should, shouldn't say uh, just uh, guys. It's guys, girls. It's, sure. um, it's a great team. Awesome. And it's growing fast. Um, the United States now. Everything is yes. uh, evolving and percolating along there with the passage of the Farm Bill. Well, it's not signed into law yet, but it has been approved in first reading. Um, is well, this it's passed both houses? It's going uh, to the president for a signature. Sure. Uh, and and this again is going to create uh, another market that we think is going to be very favorable favorable for us. Uh, because uh, we know hemp and we know CBD and uh, I, I, there aren't a lot of companies in the world that have our expertise and capabilities uh, with respect to hemp and the creation of uh, hemp derived CBD. If you think about it, we have majority control of HempCo. Um, we took that majority control in part in anticipation that things were going to change in, uh, on a, a favorable, favorable basis in the US. Mm. We also have AgriPro uh, in Europe that's uh, Lithuania based and it's the largest largest uh, producer of organic uh, hemp in mm. uh, the European Union. Really? And also ICC Labs in South America, um, our, our, you know, the, the core of our Latin American operations, is in both cannabis and uh, hemp. So we're, mm. we have a very specific strategy that we'll be unveiling over time uh, to, to see us enter uh, that market in a way that does not upset uh, our exchanges, which which is sure. always one of our first concerns. Now about that, the the TSX is uh, you know still saying that there's no there's no permission for companies operating U.S. cannabis assets on the TSX. Cannabis. Right. Mm -hmm. So now that uh, now that CBD from industrial hemp right. is federally you know. Regulated. Yeah, time Does to go that back to the exchanges that? and say, uh, yeah. what about this? Yeah, exactly. And clearly, we're not uh, we're not violating any laws, and that's really what they're most concerned about. They so want to make sure. So, do you think sure this is the this is the th this, this is the first step. The thing that happens. This is the first step. It's the first step. Yeah, this is the first step. So it's not like everybody's going to now be able to throw off the the camouflage and say, <laughs> okay, now we can be blatant about our um, U.S. interests. No, no, and it still it certainly uh, still validates uh, our our U.S. strategy uh, with uh, with Australis. Where just mm -hmm. to recap. We uh, spun off our, divested our U.S. assets by spinning uh, them off to our shareholders, and Australis has been busy itself. I've got to get uh, Scott Dowdy, the CEO, hmm. uh, on uh, to see you. We had the CFO here. Yes, that's right. Um, and uh, and so they're assembling those assets. Uh, and then, of course, um, you know, anytime that the exchanges tell us that the rules have changed sufficiently in the U.S., we can exercise that back-in right that we built in so that we can reacquire up to 40% of Australis. Okay, so Australis, uh, just, just to worry that a bit, I mean, the to worry it? To worry at it. Okay. Yes. Go worry ahead, the worry. hive, so to speak. But uh, the I mean so Australis for me has been like a bit uh, a bit surprising because it has not performed with the same dynamicism out of the chute that Aurora has. And not that I you want to, would presume to be critical of, of Scott different and his timing, team. Different market, um, you know, right. but they've acquired some really, really good assets, and they've shown that they, all, they can also work in, a, in coordination with Aurora to a certain extent. And one good example of that is Wagner Dimas out of California, mm -hmm. uh, which is based on our uh, research. Uh, they have the, uh, the foremost pre-roll technology in the world. And so Aurora has licensed uh, the rights uh, to uh, the Canadian rights to uh, Wagner Dimas's pre-roll technology, and that's where those pre-rolls that you see on the shelves and on the uh, online stores uh, for the provinces right now, that's where they come from. And then in the U.S., Australis has acquired 15% of that company. So right. it's, it's a very, very attractive asset and, and one that's going to be in increasing demand. Uh, and I think you'll see that, uh, that model replicated uh, by Australis on a go-forward basis. Sure. Okay. Uh, let's talk financials now a bit for Aurora. What are you projecting? Having another good quarter. I'm not projecting just yet, <laughs> uh, but um, what a, you get, you're getting ahead of me here. Don't get ahead of me, James. <laughs> 
um, but we're having another good quarter, uh, and and that's you know I, we we uh, will be wrapping it up at the end of December. We're reporting in February, and um, uh, this time this time by God I want to get credit for a good quarter because you'll remember what happened in our last reported quarter uh, that we reported in November, and that was to September 30th. We had a really really good quarter, and then we had three other companies uh, report in the two days after us, and mm. it kind of kind of you know brought the market down, which is too bad because yeah. Yeah, well, the market's been suffering the slings and arrows of a broad sort of general downturn in the economic outlook. Yeah. I mean, uh, I think the World Bank has reduced its uh, projected global growth. The Certainly the trade war with China and the United States That's isn't helping thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, the pressure on interest rates to continue rising and the uncertainty around that has all sort of converged at this final quarter of the year with tax law mm -hmm. selling to make everything look as ugly as it ever anything has in, in a decade practically. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I really look but at the canvas okay, space. that's okay because investors are going to pay attention in 2019 because it's going to be a year full of capital. That's my point. It's a shopping opportunity. It is a huge Things are on sale. Yeah. Yeah. It's a discount. And not just, uh, I mean, I don't mean just uh, for our stock. I mean, mm -hmm. I think across the sector. There are some gems. There's some really good companies in this sector that have been performing well uh, and, you know, delivering uh, good quarters. Uh, and so I do think that there are multiple opportunities. And I always tell investors not to put all your eggs in one basket, but rather have a basket of stocks uh, if you want to participate in this sector. And I tell that directly to our investors as well. Mm -hmm. Do your homework. And if you like ACB, that's wonderful. And we're, we're proud to have you as a shareholder. But, you know, have a look at some of the other uh, companies, and, and particularly companies that have a different strategy, because there are different strategies, I think, that will succeed in this sector on a global basis. Well, you make me want to buy the stock right now. <laughs> which is which is weird because I'm trying not to trade. I'm a horrible trader, I've discovered in the last little couple of quarters. Okay, so then what are the big exciting milestones that investors should be looking out for in 2019? Okay, there so be. it's a bunch of things and, and one of them will be the new product forms that, that we're allowed to sell in the Canadian uh, consumer market where, by the way, Aurora has done way better than expected. You know, we weren't targeting uh, coming out of the gate faster than everybody else and um, and having you know the sort of market share that we have, but uh, we'll take it. Yeah. Um, and, it and it seems to be uh, holding pretty strong. Uh, so we've done very well in the consumer market. We're going to do even better with the uh, additional uh, products that will be uh, and product forms that will be allowed uh, by new regulation. And remember, these have to be in place by one year post legalization. So October 17th, 2019. Mm -hmm. The word that we're hearing uh, out of Ottawa is it won't take that long. Uh, I think the government understands that the sooner they allow for additional product forms, concentrate edibles, things like vape pens, cannabis-infused beverages, uh, the more successful we'll be in migrating consumers from the black market to uh, the legal market. So it's in everybody's interest to do that faster, and I think that will happen earlier in the year than anticipated. Uh, and those are, let me emphasize, additional uh, higher value added, high margin products, and, and the benefits uh, of, the, um, of the new regulations allowing these product forms will go disproportionately to the companies that have already demonstrated those competencies. And Aurora, let me remind you, uh, was the first and I think still only company to have been able to get through the Health Canada process to get a vape cartridge onto the market. So we currently have our 55% CBD vape cartridge on the market for our medical patients. We understand how to do this. Our uh, new product development team under Dr. Shane Morris, another, another one of our rock stars, um, has lots of exciting plans for new product forms and formulations and stuff like that. Um, another catalyst for us will be, in, uh, in the very short term, um, the impact of soft gels. So we now have our soft gels uh, being produced out of Aurora V on the island of Montreal. They're now in both the medical market and the consumer market. Um, that's a great product. These are 10 milligram uh, capsules. Uh, they sell for 45 bucks for 30 capsules. So once again, high margin. Um, and we'll be selling as many of those as we can. And our capacity at our existing facility, Aurora V, is to produce up to 1.4 million of those capsules every week. Hmm. That's a lot of that's a lot of pills. That's a lot of pills. Okay, so where is profitability on the timeline for Aurora? Well, you know, I've been flirting with this for some time, and every time I've said uh, cautiously, I think you know, by the end of uh, 2018, uh, we've had a couple of other things come along, opportunities, acquisitions, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So we're still not far off, uh, and and my feeling is a couple more quarters, and we're there. I think we'll be there ahead of a lot of other companies, mm -hmm. um, and the reason why is simply because revenues are rising so fast. Uh, you know, our our G and A has been you know pretty hefty because we've had things to deal with. Uh, we've had to deal with integrations from some pretty big uh, companies. Uh, including, you know, 
Med Relief and, uh, and Kahneman. Um, and we've also expanded around the world. So our operations are, are costing us money. But the GNA is not growing, uh, is not going to grow as fast as revenue, is not even close uh, over subsequent quarters. And our sales and marketing expenses obviously are going to come down because you know, we saw kind of a one time hit mm -hmm. uh, in the opportunity with the more flexible regulations ahead of October 17th. That won't be repeated for some time. So uh, I, we're, we're getting very, very, very close. Well, yeah. that's great. Yeah. Uh, okay, Ken, well, that's a fantastic update as usual. I'm sure that our audience is, is doing backflips. You've got some great supporters out there. Ta-da!